Good morning, Common Ground. Welcome back. Well, let's all stand and uh, give yourself uh, praise. And then please do not uh, shake hands, but just uh, do a COVID-19 greetings and then wink, nod. All right. And that's the new uh, way to uh, say hello. All right. And then let's, uh, as we stand, let's give a, a praise to our Lord, all right? Yes, thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you honor. To your name, amen. And uh, before uh, we be seated, uh, let's uh, honor all the medical staff all over the world. You know, they're doing their best. Uh, so I don't know, Koreans came up with this. Is that Koreans came up with this, or is the all over the world thing? Like, uh, you're number one, but whatever, you know, do this, or heart. Let's give them a round of applause, too. They're out there still fighting against the COVID-19. We thank you for your service. All right, please be seated. It's been um, uh, over three months now. Uh, we've been very creative uh, through uh, Facebook, and then the online, long distance, uh, we did our best. And then finally, we are at this point, uh, back in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. And uh, we have a great preaching ready, and then the songs ready to uplift you in the name of the Lord. And don't forget, uh, tomorrow is the Memorial Day. So although we enjoy this four-day weekend, please, let's honor those who gave ultimate sacrifice okay since hundreds of years and here in korea alone u.s service members died for the cause so over 35,000 people died in world wars i'm sorry during the korean war and if you in your family, back home, affected by any COVID-19, our prayers are with you. And please do your best to reach out to them and encourage them. And uh, as we'll move, move along, as uh, HPCon has changed to Bravo, we do our best to practice social distancing and all the, the rules, the policy regulations that US, FK, and Korea KCDC kind of implement to minimize the COVID-19 here on Penn, let's help them, right? Let's not argue with why we have to wear masks, but it's good for you and the others. And after that, uh, we have uh, things already for you. Uh, we're going to do a picnic sometime in June, hopefully. And then uh, I know Michael uh, led you to orphanage trip last time. And uh, the orphanage are waiting for us to come back and visit one in Seoul here in Pyeongtaek. So we could do that as well. Um, and uh, this Saturday, if you uh, still awake, around 9.30 or 10-ish, you get to see uh, U.S. paratroopers jumping into this Kim Humphreys airfield, skydiving and static jumps, especially from brownstone. Uh, you could see rain down on Humphreys, take pictures, all right? 10, hours, probably half, last 30 minutes. So last Friday, I was uh, down uh, in south doing uh, 92 miles biking. Uh, 20 service members went down and then took us about seven hours to, to bike from north to south. And thought came to my mind, when's it going to end? It took all day, and some people had some challenges with bicycles and their physical limitations. When's it going to end? But let me encourage you. God's love is endless. His grace is endless. But the issues, the problems and challenges going on in this world, there is an end. 
although this corona, COVID-19 looks very powerful, but believe me, God gave us intelligence, science, and skills to dominate these medical challenges. So believe there is an end. Psalm 61 says, Hear my cry, O Lord. Listen, listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I call to you. Where my heart is faint, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For, your, for you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me abide in your tent forever. Find refuge under your shelter of wings. Please join me in prayer. Lord, we thank you. As things are shifting and changing, we are so thankful that we are back here in this chapel as a congregation, as a community, we gather here to lift your holy name. We ask your presence this morning to bring peace in our hearts, comfort our souls, because we believe that Jesus overcame the fear, that Jesus overcame anxiety, that Jesus overcame the worries. So help us rely on in your name, in your power, in your love. Help us not to be despair, discouraged, but let us encourage one another and look to you because you are the true refuge the rock, the shelter. So please bless us. Bless our souls. Let your living water flow this morning, Lord, as we give pra praise and worship to you. As the message goes out, encourage our hearts. We invite your presence. Anything not from Jesus, we rebuke, we reject any darkness, we push away those things. The light of Jesus will shine upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please. I've made notes. I would tell you to stand. In fact, if you'd like to sit down between verses and stand back up, if you'd like to sit down between songs and stand back up, we understand you've been inside a lot. Any, any additional sitting and standing you want to do is going to be great. Daniel 4.37 says, Praise and exalt and glorify the King of Heaven. I hope you can feel God's power here today, His love, the joy. We are in fellowship together. We are worshiping together. And I know for sure that you are singing with me today. <laughs> So please sing with me hymn number 210, Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
please turn with me to hymn number 214, He Has Made Me Glad. singing hymn number 649, When I Look Into His Holiness. Thank you. 
more time. When I look into your holiness, when I gaze into your loveliness, when all things that become shadows in the light of you, when I found the joy of reaching you, Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us, let us throw off everything that easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked for us. We have been persevering. And as we just sang that song, and I, I just want us to realize how powerful it is when we are focused on Jesus and all the things around us just begin to fade. They begin to fade. That's why it's so good to be back in the house of God with you. Because today we can worship together. I, I, I don't know about you, but there's times, you know, I'm watching Facebook, or even when I was preaching, it was kind of like, ah, I want to get back. I want to be there. I want to be present. I want to, I want to worship with my brothers and sisters. I want to be able to bump elbows and look you in the eye and see you. And here we are. It is so good. It is so good to be present in, with you and in God's house, in the presence of God. It is so, so good. I love all my bandits out there. You look good with your face mask on. I love it. I can tell if you're really looking at me in the eye now. No longer looking at your lips because I can't see them. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. And it is good to be back. It is good to be back. And as we move along in our service this morning, I, I want to encourage you. In a moment here, Sam's going to come and give, our, give us our pastoral prayer. But as he's praying, I want us to just begin to focus in on God. We've had great worship already, and we know that God is present with us. And that we would stay in a state of worship this entire time. That you would just worship him. You just worship him and focus in. You know, at the end of service, there's a basket at the back. You can drop off your offering. And on Thursday, we're going to celebrate the life of... Um, Mrs. Barber, as she, you know, has left us. Finally, we get to come back together this Thursday at 4.30, back here. So we look forward to having all of you here, if you can be here, to celebrate her life. But God is a good God. 
And I encourage you just to persevere just a little bit longer. And remember, you are surrounded. You are surrounded by a great, great cloud of witnesses. And many of us, many of us in the church have gone before. They've gone before us. And they've gone through things just like this and worse. And we can persevere. We can continue on. And we can praise God. Amen? All right, Sam, why don't you come on up here, brother? I'm going to let you pray for this group of people. Or I'm going to start us out, then I'm going to let you come. So stand beside me here. Okay? This is how we do it on Wednesday mornings. You know, we start and somebody else joins us. But let's just start praying, okay, guys? Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. You are good, Lord Jesus. You are better than we could ever imagine and hope for. And this morning, God, I pray that we would focus in on you, not on ourselves, Lord, that we would remember why we're here, Lord, to give you praise and honor, and that those who may not know you, God, would be encouraged to come to you. God, help us throw off all the things that bind us, Lord, all the worries and concerns, God, help us to let that go right now so we can focus in and worship you, Lord, and be focused in on you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. As we continue to pray, let us take a moment individually so that you can pray. Uh, your personal prayer to the Lord, and then let us, and we, we continue to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us to be in the house of the Lord this morning, Lord. It is so great to see and meet other brothers and sisters in Christ and worship together again. But we praise your mighty name and offer our adoration to you. Accept our worship and praise throughout the service and give us assurance of salvation that we find in Jesus Christ alone. We thank you for accepting us as your own sons and daughters through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Help us remember your love and grace all the days of our lives, and let us be the witness of gospel wherever we are. As a deer pants for the streams of water, we pants for your mercy and grace that revive us from any discouraging situations and problems we are currently facing in our daily activities. Heavenly Father, may this COVID-19 situation be controlled soon so we can Really come to this chapel and worship together continuously. May your sovereign healing touch and comfort be with those who are heavily affected by the current situation, Lord. But our Heavenly Father, above all, strengthen our faith so that we may focus on Jesus and rely upon Him. Help us, Lord, to root ourselves deeply in you to seek your will for our, our lives, to stop and listen for your voice when we are troubled, to fully rely on you when we strive to do what is right, to remember you and trust in you when our faith is challenged, to meditate on your goodness and your gracious will when we begin each day, so that like trees by a stream which send down their roots to the water, we may produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit by your power. Our Heavenly Father, as we pray for the particular needs upon our heart, hearts today, for those who are in our hearts, we ask that you give us the faith to know that you hear our prayers. We also pray for the message that we will, we will, you will speak through your servants, Chaplain Stephen Kim. Cultivate our hearts to put your word in them and live, live out according to your will. We pray all these in Jesus Christ, 
our precious Savior, who first taught us to pray to you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If y'all can show me just a little grace this morning, I just want to look at you. Chaplain Lester was so right. You're, you're beautiful. 
You know, and what makes you so beautiful is you're created in God's image. You know, and you're created for his glory. And oh, how he is glorified when we're in unison worshiping him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 27, verses 4 through 8. And that's page 443 in your pew Bible. Psalm 27, starting with verse 4. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. The word of the Lord. It's good to see you all face to face and praise the Lord that we come all together and worship together. I once preached uh, through a virtual service and it was the most hardest experiences I, have, I ever experienced. And even during the service, I had to, I had to read you. because it was, it, I felt so awkward because there was nobody on, in this room. I was speaking in the air. There's no response. It seems I lost connection with the people. And I was preparing this. I realized that God doesn't want to speak in the air. That's for sure. He wants to have intimate relationship with all of you. He wants a personal relationship with you. Counselors sometimes use a miracle question. And it goes like this. What if you woke up tomorrow morning and found a miracle had happened and the life was perfect? How does it look like? That is a miracle question counselors sometimes use. And as, as I was preparing this sermon, I changed that to miracle prayer question. And then it goes like this. What if you woke up tomorrow morning and found God answered, God had answered your prayer, life was perfect. What did you ask for? Of course, there are so many prayer requests you might have nowadays. You may ask for healing for your health of your family members, maybe God's guidance or wisdom, in this situation, maybe you may pray for financial need at this time. But if you choose one thing, only one thing you can ask God, what would you choose? What would you ask to God? And all these prayer requests are valid, and we have to ask and seek God's guidance. But I encourage you today one thing you should not forget to ask God is FaceTime with him. When I say FaceTime, somebody told me I have a FaceTime with my wife, and I asked, is your wife in the States? No, 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 my wife is at home. I have face-to-face -face time. So this is what I mean. When we have FaceTime with God, that we need to face-to-face -face time with God.
how do you connect each other among us? We often use face, FaceTime. Maybe this pandemic uh, environment, FaceTime might be the, one of the main resources we can use to connect uh, for one another. I remember when I was uh, deployed, I could not use FaceTime at the, mo at the time, but I could, we could, I could use my phone to talk to my family members and send emails, exchange emails one another, and then uh, mail packages. And those were the main source, main source of my strengths to complete my mission. Especially when I received the package through the mail with some goodies in there that I like from my family with some uh, letters, hand, hand writing letters from my wife and kids. That made my day. What are your means to connect with God? What was your last FaceTime with God? How often do you read his email and respond? Have you ever received a surprising package from God? Psalm 27, we just read, is written by King David. And it shows how he got connected with God during his challenging period of his life. As you all are aware, his life was so colorful. He had many ups and downs. He was a shepherd, but he was not afraid to fight with the giant Goliath when he put down God's name. When he had a victory over Goliath, he became so famous and the people praised him and sing sang, uh, sang for him and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Saul was so jealous. King Saul was so jealous, tried to kill King da I mean David. And David had to run away from the evil Saul for four years. Even after King Saul died, he became the king of Israel. You know, his life not, was not that smooth. He had many issues with the families. He lost his baby boy that was the offspring from his adulterous affair. His daughter was raped by, his, by her half-brother, and that half-brother was murdered by his own brother. And that brother was exiled and came back a couple of years, and that brother was not treated as a, as a, as a prince, but as an ordinary uh, person. That made him very angry and bitter toward the King David and tried to kill his dad. King David discovered that plan, but he wanted to protect him. But somehow he got killed. The son got killed. The rebellion ended. But David was heartbroken. In that moment, we are not sure yet when exactly King David wrote this psalm. Probably earlier, earlier in his life, when he was hunted by King Saul, his life was threatened. And he, in any situation, in any environment in his life, he was in a danger. His enemies were threatening his life. He was surrounded by those enemies, tried to hunt him. During this time, what did he ask for? What did David, he, if he chose just one thing to ask God out of these all conditions, and he says in verse 4, One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. As you know, King David, I mean, he has great position. He was a mighty man. He had the authority. He got everything he could have used to protect himself. But in that situation, he said, Jesus, I mean, God himself, God alone is sufficient. He is a soul, my protector. If I, ha if I have him, all things will be resolved. 
And he wanted to have connect, connection with God. He wanted to have FaceTime with God. In verse 8 says, My heart says of you, Seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. He was seeking God's face. That was all he needed at the moment to overcome those challenges, hardships he was facing. Why? Because in verse 1, we did not read, but he says, God is your light, salvation, stronghold. And verse 5 says, he will keep you safe. He is God. And he will hide you in the shelter of, of his presence. In verse 9, he will help you. Verse 10, he will receive you even though your father and mother forsake you. He did not say my money, possession will uh, protect me, keep me safe. My friends, my families will hide me and help me. My position will support me. People will receive me. But he said, God, who is alone, my strong, strong strength and my salvation, my light, he is sufficient for me. You know, God has unlimited resources to help you and sustain you. If you are connected with God, if you possess God, all the power and resources of God are available for you. I have three children uh, in high school and one in kindergarten. One day my six-year-old kindergarten came to my wife and said, Mom, I have three wishes. I really want to have these three things. And mom says, what are those? And she says, first, I want to have toys to speak, like human being, you know. He, she wanted to have toys to speak. Second, she wanted to have magic wand, everything she can have, magic wand. And third, she says, mom, I want to have a little sister. And my wife came to me and, hey, uh, Stephen, you know, Kayla told me this. It seems all impossible. It was so interesting to me because I was preparing this sermon and I called my, my daughter, Kayla. Hey, Kayla, come over here. I have a question for you. You have three things you wished you told, I heard from, your, uh, from um, uh, my wife, your mom. If you choose just one, what would that be? And she was pondering very seriously. She took very seriously and thought and thought, but she could not say anything because she wanted to have all three. And I told her, hey, Kayla, what about magic wand? If you have magic wand, I mean, you can have toys. You can make toys, you can speak. You can have a little sister. And her eyes literally got bigger. Wow, that's right, Dad. <laughs> and the next day, she came to me and reminded me that, you know, that I only need one. I only need one magic wand. If you have God, all things will come to you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Seek God's kingdom. Seek his face, and all things come along with it. In today, how do you do FaceTime with God? I mean, in David's time, my King David went to Tabernacle, and then because that the place uh, God dwelt among his people. And then King Solomon built a temple. That's the place people come and meet with God, have FaceTime with God. And we know the temple was destroyed in AD 70. And then Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your, in your midst? So you don't have to go to temple or you don't have to go to chapel or you don't have to go to church to have face time with God, to connect with God. Because the Holy Spirit, God, is wherever you are. You can have your own Bible studies, your own meditation, quiet time, and 
group Bible studies and worship like this, say, like this environment together and praising the Lord and praying. All those are the resources we have to have connection, to have face time with God. How can you more effectively connect with God? Here in Korea, you know, we have a strong phone signals and there are many places uh, Wi-Fi available. But somehow in our uh, own, own postal base, that Wi-Fi is not that strong. We only allow to have only one modem. And one modem doesn't cover whole house. So we figured that we need to buy Google Wi-Fi points to cover whole house. We have five bedroom house. So to cover whole house, we needed to Google Wi-Fi points. Before this, to be connected with, with Wi-Fi, I have to go closer to that modem in that room to get connected. So to connect with God, I believe you find the right place, right time. I think it seems important. King David went to Tabernacle to meet the Lord. It would be hard for him to focus on God while he was working. A lot of things going on, Adam and stuff, so all the things he has to deal with. Maybe not a good place in the battle. What is a good place and good time for you to meet with the Lord? I think it's important to find and uh, put in your calendar, this is the time I'm, gonna, I'm going to meet with our Lord Jesus Christ. It can be while you're jogging, listening music, walking, at home, at work, or while you're driving, or are you good in the morning person, evening person, during the day? What is the perfect time and place for you? This is works for me. This is a time and place I'm going to spend time with God. Finding the right spot. That is important. Because there are so many things going on in our lives, so many distractions in our lives. Your work, your phone, your children, your TV, sports, chores at home. This go on and on and on. If you don't put that face time with God priority in your life, before you go to bed, wow, what did I do today? I was so busy. I did not have a time with God. Where is your God in your list of today? Is it very top priority? Is it, is it all very bottom of your list? Whatever after you all complete all the tasks you have, and the whatever left over, I'm going to use for God. How important God to you? How do you treat God in your life, in your daily lives? Jesus visited Martha and Mary's home, and Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what Jesus was saying, but Martha was distracted by all the preparations he had to, he had to make because he invited you know, important person. Jesus Christ came home, and she had to prepare all the food and all the things for the guest. But he saw, she saw Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ, listening to words, and he got, she got upset. And she said to Jesus, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. And Jesus answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. One thing is really needed in your life. What would that be? If you forget everything in your life, if you can't just, only one thing you can focus on, the most important thing in your life. Isn't it God? to you. And Jesus says, Mary, Mary chose the right thing. He chose a better thing. Spending time listening to God's words. While I'm working, if I have very imp some important uh, things uh, to talk to my commander, I do office call. And I do office call, and I put that 
you know, time and, uh, time and date on my calendar. That's very my high priority. I don't change that office call with my commander unless any family emergency happens or my commander cancels it. Then all other things cannot bother that office call. That is so high, so high important. How about God? Is it, is it, do you think it's good, important to have office call with God? God is the highest king. He is the most important person in your life. And have office call with him day by day. Then let that be your priority. You can put in your calendar. Nowadays we have phone and you can set alarm and you know, make uh, alert to you, remind you, oh, this is time, face time with God. So securing a right spot is crucial to connect with God. Second, to have effective communication and connection with God, I believe troubleshooting. Troubleshooting is also very crucial. Troubleshooting, by definition, is discovering why something does not work effectively and make suggestions how to improve it. You know, often I go to near to Wi-Fi, very strong, you know, modem, and somehow my phone is not connected to Wi-Fi. And sometimes my kids come to, come to look at my phone, hey, Dad, you got to turn on Wi-Fi. And if you don't turn on Wi-Fi, you never get connected. You got the right spot, right time, with God, quiet, this is perfect for me. But if you don't turn on your spiritual heart with God, you never get connected. Psalm 66 verse 18 says, If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. If we have sins in our heart not confessed, there is no connection with God. So as you come to the Lord, you know, confess your sins. What I have done wrong before God and toward others. Confess your sins and turn on your Wi-Fi with God. Maybe you are, good, good, you are in a good spot and you turned on Wi-Fi, you confess your sins, you are cleared with God and somehow your connection seems very slow. Have you ever experienced that? You know, you turn on the Wi-Fi, and why is that so slow? I thought our house has 5G, then why is that so slow? One of the reasons why it gets slow, there are so many uh, connections. Many people try to connect at the same time on the same Wi-Fi channel, so-called congestion. If so many people at the same time on the same Wi-Fi channel, then it slows down. It slows down. As you come to the Lord, if you have so many things in your minds, and you come to the Lord, congestions. It slows down, connecting with God. You have things to worry about at work. You have things to worry about at school, at work, I mean at home, and you know, all your career and your missions going on, your tasks. I mean, there are so many things you bring along meeting with God. I mean, King David had many things in his mind, many victories he had, accomplishments, enemies to hunt him, and all the worries and concerns. But one thing he asked of the Lord, seek his face to dwell in the house of the Lord. He decided to leave everything behind and to focus on God. He had such a desire to seek the Lord, to find him, to see his face. That was his sole desire. That was so strong that he could leave all things behind him so that he can really focus on God. If you read very carefully verses 7 and 8, it shows very clearly, for in the day uh, 7, Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face, your face, Lord, I will seek. I mean, he was really focused on, I really need to see you, 
God, I really need to meet with you. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, Paul says, Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. This is like athletic uh, imagery, imagery. You know, the runner, when they run, they're not looking back. Paul says, I'm, I'm forgetting what is behind. I'm looking for, forward. Look God. Only God focused. The runners only focus on the finishing line. As you come to the Lord, why you are not meeting the Lord? Why you cannot see God? Not because God is not there. God is everywhere. But we are so occupied with so many things in our minds, we cannot really focus on God. We cannot really give our 100% to God. I remember when I was in high school, after I received Christ, my heart was so desired to see the Lord. Each year we had a retreat, big youth revivals. Every time I attended, before I attended, I, my heart was so desired to see and meet the Lord. One day, always I fast. Whole day I fast before that retreat. And I was praying to the Lord, Lord, I need to see you. I need to have face time with you. I, my heart is burning. Without the meeting, I'm not going to come back to home. My heart was so burning and desired to see the Lord. God never missed to see me during the revival, retreat, youth retreat, four days. And I look at myself right now. Stephen, where is their heart? Why you are not seeing God day by day? Why you don't have FaceTime nowadays with God? How come sometimes you see, rarely you see God, but most of the time you don't see God? And I be repented to God, my desire, Lord, Please recover my desire to see the Lord, to seek his face. Not because God was not present, but because my heart was so divided. So many things occupied my mind. I could not give 100% to God. And third, wait. Wait for the Lord. Give a time for God to respond. Often we pray, Father, we need this, 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 and we just stand up and walk away. And we read the Bible, and Lord, I did my homework. Chapter 1, I read. Bye. I walk away. Have, can you imagine you talk to your friends or your family members, FaceTime, and you talk for about an hour, and then, bye, I'm going home. See you later. The other person is about to say something, but you got to wait and see. Wait and see what God says to you. We are not listening to God. We are not seeing his face. Why? Because we are not waiting enough. We are not patient enough to listen to God. Sometimes we are so uh, unbalanced diet, you know, picky diet. We only choose what I like to eat. As we read and uh, listen to God's word. This is the words I want to take, not this one. Sometimes you got to sit down and wait and see what God says to you. God may speak to you through your friends, Bible, preaching, prayer, even through nature. Let us be pay attention and wait for the Lord. Sometimes we just sit down after you listen to God's words, Pray to God. Just sit down to nothing. And Lord, speak to me. I'm here, ready to listen to you. What should I do? I read this verse, and I pray to God, Lord, what should I do? Pay attention. Wait and be patient. Psalm 46, 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 37 says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Also, Psalm 27 ends with this, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take a heart. Wait for the Lord. David waited for four years while he was running away from King Saul. About seven years ago, I was a CPE resident, clinical pastor education, to become a hospital chaplain. It was a great program. That was the most efficient program for me. Uh, 
But in the midst of that one year education, in the middle of night, I woke up. There was thunderstorm outside and lightning and heavy rains. In the middle of night, I suddenly I felt hopeless, helpless, and worthless. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where those emotions were coming from. I was so devastating. And I was a chaplain at the time. I was a father and husband, and I had to support all this. But I lost every power and motivation. I cannot support anymore. I cannot do anything. But now I knew, I know that God, the Holy Spirit, was praying for me at the time. I did not have even power to pray to God. But I know God, the Holy Spirit, who dwelt among me, praying so hard. Deep inside of my soul, wanted to seek God, seek help from him. He is the only one who can help me. That's what I believed at the moment. Even though I could not have any strength to pray, I believe that's what was going on at the moment. And next day I went to, I made an office call with my supervisor, chaplain. And then I went to him and I explained what happened last night. And he listened, listened, listened. After all, he listened and he said, Hey, Stephen, if you want, I can hug you. Can I hug you? And then, you know, he embraced me. I was embraced by him. And I was crying like a baby. And I felt the heart, warm heart of our Heavenly Father. And sometimes you may go through some challenges and hardships in your life. Maybe you don't know what to pray, how to pray at the moment. But remember, God is there with you. And the Spirit within you, praying for you. And I hope and pray, inner your soul. You know, pray, seek God's face. Even in that moment, I believe, as you seek God's face, God will meet you. God will meet you. God will appear to you. God will talk with you, connect with you several ways. Maybe through the phone, through the emails, through the text messages, maybe sometimes surprising packages. For me, that was a surprising package. God comforted me through the chaplain. And then I ask you, I conclude this message, ask you this miracle prayer question again. What if you woke up tomorrow morning and found God, answer, God had answered your prayer? Life was perfect. What did you ask for? Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words. We thank you for this time we gather together. We thank you for this amazing grace from our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I know that there are so many prayers we have to uh, ask in our daily lives. Father, but I pray, let us not forget one thing we should ask to meet the Lord, to seek his face in daily lives. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.